thank God for being God because there is a confidence that if he is there and he is there, you can be sure. That's why the scripture says those who are after God should realize that God is. He is. And then he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you realize that God is God, seek him diligently. For he will reward your life abundantly. And he will make you happy, successful, spiritually stronger than the world. It is well with you, child of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are going to read 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18. 1 Kings 19, verse 18. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Praise the Lord. This is God's composition with Elijah. It got to a point, it looked like everyone in Israel had become subservient to Baal, that become the children, the servants of Baal. And Elijah was complaining to God, what is going on? I am the only one left in the entire land of Israel that worships you. The rest have turned to worship this idol and some other idols that were. And God said, no, in the midst of the abomination that you are seeing, I have 7,000. But well, that's a small, small number for a country of millions of people, 7,000 only. But God does not lack a remnant. And that's the message of today. Are you God's remnant? Are you one of God's remnant? In the multitude of what you are seeing today, are you one of God's remnant? In the world of today that has gone completely perverse, as a matter of fact, berserk in knowledge, there will be always God's remnant. Those who have not turned to evil, those who have not used their mouths to kiss evil, those who are not using their hands, their lives to glorify evil. Can you be God's remnant? Can you hold on to the scripture strictly? Forget all of the things we are hearing today. It doesn't matter. Live anyhow. Do it. Live as God wants you to live. He said, be righteous and be holy. For I am holy, even as I am holy. That is how we ought to live. Not as the world has detected. What you find today is that the church is struggling to live at the standards of the world. We are trying to bring the culture of the world into the church. We are trying to do things to meet with the so-called standards of the world. Take the issue of homosexuality and lesbianism, whatever they be called, and God calls those things abomination. But today it is the preaching of the world. You must accept it. That's the way it is. It's not that you can choose. No, you must. You dare not say it is wrong for anybody to do it. And the church is also joining to project it. What God calls abomination. The standard of God is purity, but the world says purity cannot and must not be observed in everything. And the church is adapting it into its own systems, into its own doctrines. Doctrines are coming left and right. Theology is supposed to be the study of God. Now we have strange things that are called theology. What is going on in the world? I am saying this to let you understand that you cannot live by the standards of the things that you are hearing. Return to your Bible. What does the scripture say? It says, do not, then do not. Somebody tells you, no, 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 that time has passed. He has written a new Bible. Leave him and his new Bible. He has some crazy interpretation in his head. He can turn things upside down. Leave him and his interpretation. I want to say something about lesbianism and homosexuality. It never, ever generates life. It cannot. 
there is no way two homosexuals will produce children. They cannot. Neither can the two lesbians produce children. They cannot. It is the association of death. It brings death, not life. So how can you love death instead of life? Ah, love, love, love it. Love what? Love death. Love what leads to destruction. We want to destroy the world by depopulating it through homosexuality and lesbianism. It will not happen. God will not allow it to happen. Change your style. You can be God's own remnant. 7,000 only in a population of millions. We don't know how many would be God's remnant today in this world. In spite of the more than 8 billion people that we are, or we are zoomed to be on earth. But you can be one of such. Even if there were two, you should be one of them. If there is going to be just one, be that one. But be part of God's remnant. Obey the commandments of God. Walk in the will of God. Follow the scripture strictly. Let them call you a fanatic. The remnant ought to have been a fanatic. Whoever of the 7,000 would have been so fanatically about God that maybe sometimes is pushed away by others. Whatever they say of you, remain God's own. Be that remnant. It will be well for you. It is well for you already in this world. They may persecute you, but it is well for you. They may throw you out of your home. It is well for you. They dismiss you from work. It is well for you. Send you away from school. Do all manner of things against you. It is well for you. For so long as God's remnant you are, you are the best of the best. In God, and God will always replenish your life. And more than that, you sit with him on his throne in heaven. You are blessed indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.